my name is Richard Underwood and I've had Parkinson's for diagnosed for three years. I have considerable problems with sleep. Firstly, I can't turn over in bed. I feel like I'm an old tanker. It takes me three miles before I can turn over. I also suffer with cramp at night and also my right leg um, actually goes out of control with tremors when I'm awake. I also have problems of getting continuous sleep and I get about two to three hours sleep and then I get an hour, an hour and a half, two hours when I'm awake. And some of you on this call often get messages from me at three o'clock in the morning. And as we know with Parkinson's, you always get a reply because there's always somebody awake. I also suffer with fatigue and that can either be put down to my sleep issues or it can be that two o'clock in the afternoon, I literally just fall asleep. I can actually see the fatigue approaching. It's like a train as it comes around the corner, it goes through my body and I just nod off for 10 minutes here and there. The issue I have with the fatigue issues is that when I wake up, I literally feel like I'm in another universe or another planet. I am extremely weak down my right side, which could cause um, basically issues of trips, falls, and etc., which I haven't experienced as of yet. Um, an interesting fact about Parkinson's, where the mum major fact is that we're all different. So I'll throw the first thing out there for people. I can run backwards. And that's my story. My name is Arthur. I was diagnosed with Parkinson at 47 years old. I shared my life with this disease in a blog called convivientoconelparkinson.com, which until today includes 150 articles and through the publication of three books and present, uh, to the present day. My sleep problems are relevant and almost always follow the same pattern. As I would wake up very soon around 6 a.m., Exercise every morning regularly, not sleeping up and being really active. It comes to time to bed and I sleep in 10 minutes. After two hours, I wake up with the desire to urinate and by, by making the necessary effort to get up, walk to the toilet and back, my mind is activated in such a way that I, I, I need between 60 and 100 minutes to go back to sleep. This is all the same until five o'clock more or less. For the moment, while we can, I will not use the urinal. Something interesting is to do a diet under the supervision of a doctor to lose weight and be able to move better in the bed, to be able to turn with more easily and also to be able to lay down and get up better. Unique is that I am following a special diet, diet that seeks to achieve an energy balance through food. Interactive, inter integrative medicine that tries to improve renal and this is the function, reducing inflammation, caring as best as possible for the liver. My life has not changed very much in general terms, but I am better. You must not extrapolate because each person is different. Thank you very much. Seven. Uh, yes, you heard that right. Age seven. I'm now 52. Um, my sleep problems were very similar to Richard's until I had DBS. I couldn't turn over in bed. I really struggled to get to sleep. I often used to keep the TV on so I could fall asleep watching the TV. However, since I had deep brain stimulation, I have a whole host of other problems. My main problem is, and that without warning, I can start twitching like a fish that's been caught and left on the bank. And almost just press is quite hard actually, usually. And then it stops. I also have a problem with acting out my dreams that I've been, well, twice I've tried to punch my wife in my sleep. I've actually been trying to defend her at the time in my dream, but I just lean over and I sort of really, really give, you know, really sort of let go with my with my fist. Fortunately, I've never heard of it. These are real issues. And it actually gets to the stage where I really sort of fear going to bed now because I don't actually know what's, what I'm going to do at any, any stage. 
Fortunately, it doesn't actually bother Viv. She she said, oh, if you hit me, I'll hit you back, which actually is quite quite amusing, really. But it does worry me. And I also suffer from a great deal of fatigue during the day. And I often have a, I call, I call it a snoozle, which is like a, not quite a snooze. It's about 20 minutes shut eye on the tea. And then I tend to feel loads better. But no, just that being able to get rid of the, I call it fishtailing when I just like, it's almost like I'm in some kind of a, it's almost like an epileptic seizure almost, like a fish on a bank. But I wish you could get rid of that because that is, when I ended up on the, throwing myself out of bed, it's got so violent. Interesting fact about Parkinson's is, Despite the condition, you'll be amazed at the things you can still do. And in October, I managed to wing walk, which is something I never, ever expected that I'd be able to do. But I would challenge anybody with Parkinson's to, to challenge their own fears. And I think that's what we need to do. So that's my interesting fact about Parkinson's. You can do more than you think. Yep, yeah, that's my story. John Abraham, um, and I'm 76 years old, 76 years of age. The problem with, with me with this sleep is, is you you can do plenty of exercising, what have you, and you, you think you, you're going to fall asleep straight away, but but you don't. You go, you go to bed 11 o'clock, half past 12, you're ready for a cup of tea or whatever to get up. There's no pattern to the sleep at all. My interesting fact about Parkinson's, I was diagnosed from 2004. Uh, 2014, that's, that's when it started to bite. The, the first 10 years were just turn up, see the specialist and, and bugger off again. <laughs> um, once we got the first 10 years out of the way, slowly each year another bit drops off, as it were. I'm not quite sure why that should be, but it, but it does. Um, things that you, you just take for granted, you, you can't perform anymore. I've given up golf, do, do a little bit of gardening. I, I can walk in, in the fresh air outside. I, I, I could walk all day, but in in, in home, in, anywhere small, I, I I freeze. And if anybody's had freezing, that they you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, it's, 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 it's as if your feet are stuck. A, a solution for the symptom would, would 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 be something that would just improve my mobility to to get 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 more more of a life. Um, I'm not quite sure how you go about doing it, but you need something that you can switch the, the, the bits off. And that's me done. <laughs> I was diagnosed at 52. My sleep issues are <laughs> quite non-eventful, actually. What, what happens when, before I go to bed, extremely tired, want to sleep everywhere I sit, when I sit down, go to bed, I mean, go up to bed, sorry, lie down and wide awake. As Richard was saying earlier on, Facebook, <laughs> I'm always on Facebook, I get up, use my phone, put it down, lie down again, try to sleep. Sometimes I don't go to sleep, I walk up, walk, I wake up, prowl about, go to the toilet, go down the stairs sometimes, make a cup of tea, go back to bed, try to sleep can't sleep, then it's time for me to get back up. Now, by the time I'm due to get up from my work, which I do get up about five o'clock, I'm ready to go to sleep. Uh, that's my nighttime sleep pattern, it's very disruptive. During the day, I could fall asleep at the edge of a knife, just sitting down. So I'm, fatigued, I'm bad, badly fatigued as well. Uh, the, I was on the doctors today to try and get something for it, like sleep tablet, blah, blah, blah. See if they work, they might, might not. Uh, an interesting fact about Parkinson's, Parkinson's disease is 
never lose your sense of humor. Keep smiling, keep laughing, keep joking, and keep moving forward. That's my story. I was diagnosed at age 39, symptoms first at age 29, and I'm now 46. And my sleep issues, well, I used to be a champion sleeper. I would have put sleep on my resume. I could sleep eight hours, no problem. And then with the Parkinson's, it was like no more. Um, so I have trouble rolling over. I have trouble staying asleep. I get cramps. Um, now I wake up every three hours during the night to take my um, carbidopa levodopa, and that's really helpful. But still, I basically like, I think I spend for every one day that people spend, I spend two days because I, I sleep for a chunk. Then I get up, I wake up, I go eat, which is bizarre to me. I, I like do some stuff. I read my, on my phone, I, you know, watch some TV and then I go to sleep again for another chunk. So I just is so divided up and chunked up and there's no consistency. So I think to take care of sleep problems would feel like, I mean, I used to ironically dream or daydream at least about getting a full eight hours of sleep. That's like my fantasy. I, I'm so envious of others who can pull that off. So it would just feel like a great relief. Um, and I feel like I would actually have more energy and more um, oomph during the day. So that's, that's why I would love to have those sleep problems taken care of. Thank you. My name is Massimiliano Iacchini. I was a new Parkinson with Parkinson at 39 years old. And uh, my sleeping problem involved uh, uh, the part of my life. So because uh, sleep disorder in patients with Parkinson is very immensely negative impact of our quality of the life. And so I saw that uh, if I try to solve this problem, so I try to sleep well means firstly to find a good bed, to invest in the beautiful bed, and after to have maybe yoga nidra, some relaxing time, some day relaxing exercises could be interesting. Could be nice also to have a beautiful warm shower to warm the, the body. And maybe if you start to understand if there is uh, too much uh, time that we spend to go to the toilet during the night, maybe also we need to check our prostata for the people for men, like for men. And because also, of course, there is an impact of uh, medication, Pakistan medication can cause excessive uh, problem regarding also the much of urination, but of course to relax our body, to start to relax our body, to start to say we go to sleep, so it's important to create regular rules, so follow a routine, a new routine, and so one of these routines could be listen music, reading a calming book, not very aggressive, or maybe also some very soft film, or something that would make the body, they say to the body, go to sleep and uh, good night. <laughs> so it's important. Fortunately, I have an example when I go to India, every year I go to India, to do my Ayurvedic treatment in this condition. is a way that with the body during the day, a good exercise, I receive good exercise, a good message, and in the evening is very, tired, but in a good way, and we go to sleep without to say nothing. When I touch the pillow, immediately I have slept. So this is my fact, this is my story, and good night. My name is Ian Robertson. I'm 65 years old, and I was diagnosed with Parkinson's in May 2012. My sleep issues are mainly focused on overall pain, mostly in my feet. This retards my ability to fall asleep and wastes me when I try to change position. I sleep in about an hour to an hour and a half segments. And this interrupted sleep pattern is probably the main cause for my fatigue during the day. My interesting fact in Parkinson's, and this may sound weird, but the overall negative vibes one hears once they get diagnosed with Parkinson's, beginning with the doctors and even go into the support groups that we attend. We always hear how the disease might rob us of this or that, but we rarely hear that living a life with Parkinson's can still be a life that includes many positive experiences. A typical person in a day can, or a typical person can self-talk 300 to 1,000 words a minute in their head, and about 65% of these are normally negative. 
So why are we putting more negative thoughts in our heads than we need? Well, not to belittle the disease, I would like to see a more positive spin put on when we get diagnosed. It takes more, most parkies too long to get comfortable with the disease and in doing so it makes others uncomfortable dealing with us. We cannot fight this fight alone, so we need those others. In my opinion, life living with Parkinson's can only be fought when we can see the positives that we can still achieve, not just the obstacles in our way. By seeing the end goal, it's easier to find a way around, over, or under these obstacles. Uh, I also write a, a Facebook page blog called Parkinson's My Superpower. Broadly, um, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's age 47, so around about five years ago. Um, in terms of my symptoms and sleep, I have struggled quite a lot since being diagnosed. I mean, once I stayed at a friend's house, and this was pre-lockdown, and she said, Yvette, did you know that you scream like a banshee in the middle of the night? And apparently, I was like, I turned into the American werewolf in London. And, um, you know, my neighbours love me, basically. But seriously, sometimes those kind of like night terrors can be quite frustrating. You know, wake up and, you know, you know, like Matt was saying about acting out, I do actually act out my sleep. I've, I've thrown my phone across the room in the middle of the night, smashed my phone, you know, because I've had it in my hand, things like that. Falling out of bed, that's another thing. Falling out of bed is is something that has happened. Not so much now. Um, yeah, and turning over, you know, the same as what everyone else is saying. I've got beautiful silk sheets now, which I've put on the, the bottom of the bed so that I can try and turn over. Um, I've been down a course of, of um, natural therapies, melatonin, you know, and basic sleep hygiene. But I've come to realise that this is a bit more than sleep hygiene, that this is, you know, quite a debilitating part of the condition. And that, you know, you have the choice of, I mean, for, for me, it feels a bit like Japanese water torture when you can't get to sleep. And as you say, the next day, it, it's really difficult, especially around about this time. I've got a, a teenage son and he's just back for, for, you know, for Christmas. And having to do anything when I haven't, haven't had a lot of sleep, it's just I just want to go back to bed, which, you know, isn't, isn't great. I can't look after, after my, my son, really. Um, one of the things that I wish that would improve my life really. I've, I've now started taking metazapine, which is a, an antidepressant and it helps with sleep. Now there's plus sides to this. One of, one of them is that you do tend to have quite unusual dreams. Like for me, I've had in my dream, I've got, I'm on a date with Robbie Williams, for example, <laughs> which you know, there's plus sides and then there's negative sides where, you know, which can be quite traumatic. Um, what I would like is I, I'd like to not have to take these, you know, th these stronger tablets to get me to sleep. Because sometimes it's a bit of a cop out. It's like, oh, I just need something to knock me out. But that comes with its side effects, as we all know. Um, you know, for me, it's putting on weight. Um, and as you say, fatigue. So just to round off, my interesting fact is that the cause of Parkinson's is unknown. Um, and I think that, you know, there's been research into, into um, what do you call it? Family genetics and everything, but the overall cause is unknown. So if we could get to the bottom of the cause, that would be absolutely brilliant because that will you know, help people further on in diagnosis. Thank you, that, that's, my, that's my input. Thank you very much, bye. You're born, I was diagnosed in 2016.
ages 53. Excuse me. <clears throat> like a lot of people here, I used to, have to, um, used to have trouble turning in bed. But since they've bought satin sheets and satin pyjamas, and that's helped that a lot. Another thing is, I've taken up Nordic walking. That seems to have straightened up my shoulders to help turn over in bed. Um, we bought a new mattress with a soft top. That was a terrible decision to make because you just fit the hole and you can't get out. Oh, what else we got down here? If I get bored, I usually surf the internet, which I've been told off because I'm not supposed to do it in the bedroom. So I come downstairs, have a cup of tea, or play FIFA on the telly. Hmm. I used to be able to read books, but I can't concentrate anymore. Um, I have nightmares. My wife says I scream and shout like the previous person does. Sorry, I can't read your name with the glasses on. <laughs> um, what else have we got there? Oh. Like the last, um, like, medium, I've lashed out at times. Thank goodness the wife hasn't been in the way. And my kick keeps, my legs keep kicking. I fall asleep during the day. And I say, take sleeping tablets now and again just to get a good night's sleep. When I wake up, sometimes I get myself disorientated. I don't know where I am. Oh, yeah. My wife reminded me I've gone the whole week once without sleeping. Thank you. I was diagnosed at the age of uh, 37, 10 years ago. So it's been a decade with uh, Parkinson's, and it has been a roller coaster ride. My sleep problems will be turning, rolling over the bed, falling out of the bed. And the duration of the sleep determines whether I'm having a bad day or a good day. So I, but uh, once I get into the bed, I fall asleep, but it lasts for uh, from one to five hours only. If it's going to be one, one and a half hours, I know it's going to be a bad day, that the whole day is bad. with more off periods. Everything is really bad. So the maximum sleep I get is four to five hours. And as uh, Becca mentioned, I really long for an eight hour sleep. An interesting fact about Parkinson's is it's made me more creative, a better person, more compassionate. And it made me realize my purpose here on earth, starting my foundation for uh, to make a difference in the life of a person with Parkinson's. And solution for a symptom would definitely improve my quality of life and uh, with less fatigue, maybe less accident. I met with an accident because I fall, fall, fell asleep while driving. It's the same. The, my sleep pattern is the same even after DBS. Yeah, thank you. My name is Rui Koto. I am from Portugal. I was diagnosed at 38, so I'm now 47. My sleep problems get is because I sleep three, sometimes four, and I'm happy when I sleep five hours, sometimes less. Feeling tired, but not sleepy before bed. Feeling sleepy during and tired and lack of focus during the day at work. I have back pain daily. I have uh, uh, addictive impulses uh, that I channel for going to research uh, uh, things online for Parkinson's. So uh, my, my, my lack of sleep makes me more productive in research. My interesting fact about Parkinson's is if you set your mind to be every decision you make be positive, uh, things get easier, not, not better, but easier in your mind. For example, if we, 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 are, we will never get bored of people with Parkinson's. We are all unique. We have roller coaster of symptoms every day and or, or during the whole day. 
we have lots of crazy symptoms that we can joke about it. Only we can joke about it. And yes, we are super creative. I think also there's a lack of society maturity to accept people with Parkinson's as they are because there's no uh, real knowledge of, of, of to people with Parkinson's. A solution for my sleep problems would be would be make me make me more productive because I, I I still want to retire to when I'm 80 or more because I can uh, because I would recover more and I would go I don't know jogging or something every day without getting to, to, to the pharmacy of meds before going. So that's my short story for you guys. Hi, my name's Charlotte Allen. I was diagnosed with Parkinson's age 36. I'm now 53. Um, I have tremendous problems at night, which have only really occurred in the past um, six months. Before that, I could sleep for England. Before that, I could literally get up in the middle of the night, go to the loo, go back to bed, and I'm convinced I was still asleep through the whole process. Now I um, find problems getting to sleep. I can be trying to get to sleep, tossing and turning until about four o'clock in the morning. I've tried hot baths. I've tried meditation. I've tried all sorts of things. But Russ and I do need to admit to one thing. A lot of times in the night we do get up either for a cup of tea or we have been known to go downstairs and get ice cream at two o'clock in the morning. Um, for me, not being able to sleep causes all sorts of problems um, because I have to work during the day. Um, if something could be sorted with my sleep, I think the knock-on symptoms that follow as a result of not having sleep would enable me to be able to plan my day a lot better and predict um, what I would be able to achieve a lot better as well. That's my story. Hi, my name's Russ. I was diagnosed at the age of 40, eight years ago. Um, very much like Matt said earlier, prior to DBS, I had a lot of issues. Following DBS, the issues have turned more graphic in so much that at one time, I would be getting two hours segments of sleep and still feeling wide awake and refreshed as if that two hours, the two hour segments were enough for my body to, um, to actually need. But that also led to occasions where the physical fatigue showed its ugly head and I went opposite in so much that sometimes I would sleep from let's say 10 o'clock one night and nothing, nothing at all would wake me until 10 o'clock the following night. Now, to try and combat that, not knowing that the sleep was a major issue or a disorder, I went out and bought something called the world's loudest alarm clock. And I would still end up sleeping through it if I had guests arriving at a certain time. While they're parked on the drive, they can hear my alarm clock going and setting off, but they wouldn't you know, they'd be knocking on the door, ringing me. Um, I'd end up with a lot of messages on my phone, missed calls, so on and so forth. Um, there was absolutely no pattern to it. And on one occasion, I was gently woken by the bed shaking. And now that might sound funny, but there was a policeman at the bottom of my bed doing a welfare check on us because my family couldn't get in touch with us for so many days. And I was out for the count. I've also had vivid dreams of running and jumping out the back of a Hercules jet. And as I ran and went star shape for the parachute to open, um, I ended up jumping out of my bed, not knowing, not knowing this, but I was acting out the dream, landing into the bedside cabinet and crashing down into the mirrored wardrobes. Much to the um, to the surprise of Charlotte, and unfortunately, Matt gave an, uh, an example earlier. I too have ended up being unknown to me 
acting out a violent dream in my bedroom when Charlotte was at the receiving end of me trying to strangle somebody. So that's my story. The grim thing, this sleep deprivation. I mean, people falling out of bed, biting, strangling, punching. It's pretty not being able to sleep at all. It's pretty debilitating all in all, isn't it, guys? 